This is a demonstration of the OAuth 2 Connection Management Task Factory. In this example, I'll be connecting to Google Analytics. Now, the REST OAuth 2 Connection Manager is if you have an access key and a secret and you need an access token. With that, of course, you'll also need a refresh token if you are to continue to use this package. If not, you can grab that access token each time and use it for subsequent calls. This is most useful with the REST, and you can see that video for more information. In our case, we'll be generating an access token and a refresh token. We'll go to the REST source, create a new OAuth 2 connection, and here's the box where you'll fill out all your information. You should have your API key and secret. And here's a spot where you can actually paste in your access token if you already have one. If your particular API has an access token that does not expire, you could just paste it in right here or if it automatically generates it on a web client. In our case, for Google Analytics, you'll need to generate one right away. You push Get Token. And here you can choose a settings file that you pre-configured or one of the ones that we pre-configured for you. You'll have the API key and secret that you already put in, the authorization request URL. So most OAuth2 APIs will do a two-part authentication. The authentication request URL will be sending your data to the server and it will return back a code. This is called a grant type of code. Once you get that code back, you will use it in a subsequent call to get an access token. Most likely, the access token request URL will be the endpoint with a slash token parameter at the end of it. And if it is a post request, you can use this bottom box to put in your query string. Your query string will consist of your information in a URL encoded string. We can actually see an example of all this. We already have a pre-filled out Google Analytics OAuth file. An OAuth file is a settings file that you can actually configure out on your own, or you can use one of the pre-configured for you. The way you would access those is through the Program Files 86 Century 1 Task Factory OAuth 2 Config Files directory. Here you'll see a giant list of dot config files and dot OAuth files that we've already made for you. You can actually take these and configure them on your own. If you have an API that's not on this list, you can select edit and you can actually see what we put in here so far. This will be gone over in a different video. In our case, we'll be using Google Analytics and we can also see the OAuth file. So for the token getter, a settings file will be an OAuth file. We'll click that and we'll be able to see all the endpoints that we've already configured in here. These are replacements. This means that it's going to take the API key and the API secret that you've already configured right here. This grant, this code, and grant code parameter is the actual code that you'll get back from the authorization request URL. So that will be used in the subsequent call for the access token. Now, if all this information is correct, you can push get token. It should prompt you to log in, and you'll have all your information filled out. In our case, we're not going to do this. We're actually going to do this the easy way. We already have a config file set up for you. And here you can see that list of config files. Google Analytics. All you need to do is type in three pieces of information, and you have a checkbox here to encode those particular parameters. In most re recent APIs, you will need to do this. Make sure that there's no spaces before or after any request, because it will, will be counted towards the URI, ID, or client secret. Now we can see Google Analytics is asking for permission. You'll click Allow, and it'll fill out your access token. You can add headers here, which already added one for us, and the refresh token. So the refresh token is when your access token respires, it will make sure to replace that with a new one. 
So let's say you are running a package and your access token expires in the middle of it. Your package should not fail. The refresh token is actually gathered at an earlier date as soon as you put in the credentials. It will then hold that refresh token for as long as it needs to until that access token expires. It will then replace that access token for your call. If you're doing this on your own, here we suggest to put your client ID. The token request URL will be the token path that gets the access token and the refresh token or whatever your API uses. The post data will be the string response that has all your credentials in there. And you can even add headers to this response. Choose what the results will be returned in. Here's the path for the access token and for the refresh token. You can actually test this by test get refresh token. If something shows up here, then you know this tab is working. The use token store is optional. This is if you need an access token to get another refresh token. So most APIs will allow you to get a refresh token without the previous access token, but some don't. Some will need you to take the access token that you are currently using and provide it with the information to get a refresh token. You'll need to check this use token store. It'll create an ID for you, and you'll select where you want that token store path to be. This will store all your access tokens and your refresh tokens, and we'll use them for subsequent responses if that is needed. In our case, it is not. Client certificate. If you use a client certificate, you will choose this tab here. In our case, we won't need this. You can configure a proxy, and you can choose to ignore SSL certificate verifications and to follow redirects. This is if a API will take your connection and redirect it to a different connection. If this box is checked, it will follow that redirect. And there we have it. Now we're able to make calls with Google Analytics. This has been a demonstration of the OAuth 2 Connection Manager with Task Factory. For more information, you can go to century1.com or go to our support website at support.century1.com. Mm -hmm.